Here, here, here. Check, check, check this. Check this. Check this. Check, 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 check. See? This is a female. You see? A butternut. And definitely we've seen from the zucchini. If it is not pollinated, no butternut. No butternut, zero butternut. And, <laughs> okay, I'm not losing my first butternut, but I also want zucchini. We have one male. Good morning. Welcome to my garden. My name is Julie. Today I want to give you an update of our butternuts. I think you want to see what I got after cross-pollinating the butternut. We had a fun day here. I was running around, stressed, thinking of what I was going to do because I don't want to lose my first butternut. Friends, I am in a dilemma. Look at what I found. I just stepped away from the zucchini, walked through this other block in my garden and see what I found. The butternut is flowering and guess what? It's a female. I want to show you what happened. So let me give you a quick close-up look at the butternut plant before I show you the results. Welcome to this episode. Let's get in and enjoy the video. Same family with zucchini so I can cross pollinate. I don't know how it will <laughs> I don't know how it will open but keep it here. I think it will be interesting to cross pollinate so that I show you what I get. But this is what I did. Just going round. So first let's see the Butternut that we cross pollinated. <laughs> Friends, look at this. Ta -da! Look at this. Our first ever butternut is here. <laughs> look at this. So, this butternut is a continuing series. I did a DIY video on butternut some time back. It's still here. And today we have a new flower. Look, look at this. It's a female, which means there's a chance to cross pollinate again because I'm not seeing any other male flower on the butternut. And if you want butternut, just cross pollinate. So I'm going to go over to my zucchini, check whether there's a male I can use if there's no female flower. So I have two zucchinis, the one that has never given me fruit but has been giving me male flowers and the one that have harvested some zucchinis. This is our butternut in a container, winter squash in a container. I did a video, the first video explaining the different uh, tips. I also explained why I use this container. Please watch the video to understand more i planted four seedlings but three survived i also explained more in the video this was the this is another one i don't know what happened so this is our butternut here yeah <laughs> you see so i want to do another video how to support butternut at home I've just been trying to look around my compound to get materials, what I can use to support my butternut. But I also noticed this yellowing of leaves. These are pests that have, this is this one. This is caused by pests. The leaf miners, they draw these patterns on the leaf. But this yellowing of leaves could be due to lack of some nutrients like magnesium, like iron. So this is the second one, and there we have the third uh, butternut, the, the, the third plant. Look at this, let me get closer. Yeah! Look at that! <laughs> and then, just close to it, look at this. So, definitely, 
those ones that look ugly, burnt, and they are rotting, they were not pollinated. And I did not cross pollinate them because apparently for this butternut, I'm getting more female flowers and less males. And like the zucchini, I had so many males, which I also have males today, but no females. Yeah, I have so many females, but few males. So when I had this... Uh, females opening up, I didn't have a male butternut flower, so I could not come and pollinate it. And that's why you see they look rotten. So I didn't want to cross pollinate, and I want to show you the reason, <laughs> just in a minute. So we are having a good butternut here, healthy, nice and strong. So these leaves need attention, and that is what I want to prepare today. I want to make a wheat tea to provide the different nutrients just using what is available in my compound. This is the third one. See? And another butternut there. Yeah! But then look at this. Mm. No, 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 no. So this is the butternut that I cross pollinated with zucchini. Look at the shape. This, this part is longer than uh, what is at the bottom compared to what you have for a, a true butternut. <laughs> you see? So this one, I cross-pollinated it with zucchini, including this, this other one. And you see, it also has a problem. So I think this cross-pollination makes the fruit weak. It's, it's very susceptible to pest attack. Look at this. Look at this. Look. See? Not good at all. Look at this other one. There's also a pest inside there. You see? It's really trying to survive. <laughs> This one has given up the fight and it's not, it's somehow soft. It's not like this other one that is firm. This one is firm. This one it's soft, easily attacked by pests. Very funny <laughs> shape. Look at this. Well, this one's just on the same plan, the same time. See, it even came later. It's big, it's healthy. I sprayed the organic pest spray. It has not been attacked. All these ones, I sprayed them. But look at what happened. This one I also cross-pollinated. So this is the male zucchini. Bring it to the butternut. There's a bee. A <laughs> baby bee. <laughs> so you just come, rub off all the pollen. That's it. Be gentle. I think I'll open it up more and get it all inside there. So that's done. So cross pollination. Cross-pollination is not a good idea. <laughs> so from my experiments, if you can avoid it, just avoid cross-pollination. I didn't get something nice. I don't know if I try again next time, maybe it will survive. Maybe the pests just did too much damage, but the, plant, the fruit is weaker. does not look good, does not feel good. It's soft, it's mushy. So I definitely try not to cross pollinate again. Besides my hands cross pollinating this uh, butternut, bees can also cross pollinate. So just take uh, if you don't want <laughs> such results, it's best to plant these uh, plants in the, that are in the same family that can easily cross pollinate at different spots far away from each other. You try as much as you can so that you only get uh, good plants good fruits from them 
because bees will also move from one point to another. So if they are so close together, there's going to be cross-pollination. Then you get some weird looking fruits, funny fruits, and you wonder what happened while other fruits are nice.